The wee man is back. The wonder kid is back to skipper his side at a Rugby World Cup quarter final. Antoine Dupont, metal plate in his face and all. As soon as we saw him sat next to Fabien Galtier at that press conference, that put to bed any question that he wouldn't start this game. Of course he's going to start this game. And he is setting up the most anticipated of all of the quarterfinals. And that is saying something because they're all so hard to call, so hotly contested. This is going to be an unbelievable weekend of rugby and it's going to finish in Paris on Sunday night with the world champion South Africa against the host France. And Antoine Dupont will be part of that, which is huge for the sport, great for the game. And every South African fan I've spoken to, like, bring on Dupont, we, we, we want the best version of France. Well, they're getting it. And unlike South Africa, who brought the surprises with Cobus Reinach starting at nine, France, it's pretty predictable. It's a very settled looking 23 man squad. The only real surprise really, obviously there was the, the question mark over Dupont, but then the only real surprise is that, well, not even a surprise really, but Sekou Makalu is on the bench in a 6-2 split. So it's South Africa with 5-3 and France with 6-2. Wouldn't have thought that um, months ago. Um, but yeah, Sekou Makalu in, Melvin Jaminet out. That's one question mark. What happens if Tom Ramos, something happens to him? That's a little bit of a question mark. Do France have anyone that will cover, naturally cover the fullback position? I'm not so sure they do. I'm sure they will have planned for it. Louis Biel, BRA maybe. Damien Peno perhaps, but maybe not ideal. But uh, that's, that's, that's just a little subplot. If something happens, it's, it's always trade-offs, isn't it? And that's a risk. One thing that's been pointed out to me, and it is amazing to look, this, these are the match day squads for the game that took place here in Marseille. I'm sat in front of the Stade Velodrome, where the other two quarterfinals will be in Marseille, England, uh, Fiji and Wales, Argentina. In this stadium behind me, France and South Africa took part in one of the great games. 30 points to 26 it finished for France that day. Red card for Peter Steph de Toy early. Second half red card for uh, Antoine Dupont. And then it was Dion Ferry, I think, got a yellow card late on. And the, the lead swung back and forth. France got out to a lead. South Africa hauled them back in and then France won it at the death. I should have crossed out Melvin Jaminet's name on that list. But the point is, only eight players that were involved that day aren't involved on this occasion. 38 out of the 46 players are involved in Paris on Sunday night. And of those eight, four of them aren't there because of injuries. Marchand and Marks and... Untermach and, and Mapimpi. Maybe Mapimpi wouldn't have been in anyway, but you take my point, there's four injuries. It, that's incredible a, a year on, and that was an unbelievable game. And I'm sure that game will have been revisited by both head coaches when they were making their selections. Let's remind ourselves of that South African side then. And the reflections since then, in the comments on the video, and please leave your comments there, I love it, were that this is South Africa on attack mode. They're going after points early. And you, you can certainly see the logic in that. Numbers 9 to 15 is just rocket fuel, jet fuel, just gas everywhere. <coughs> Excuse me, and I've got some great people following the channel, you included. So a brilliant comment, I thought, was like, is this a trap that Razi Erasmus has laid for France? Is he trying to combat their kicking game? Because France kick a lot and they kick with great variety. Are they trying to make France fearful of kicking and going away from their normal game by having incredible amounts of pace in the backfield when they could return kicks with interest when you've got Willemse, Arensa, Colby, Creel, Reinach, Libok. It is a frightening amount of gas in the back line. I think that if that is the case that's a win-win for South Africa because if France move away from their natural game plan that's a big psychological boost for South Africa and if France do kick then South Africa have got players back there that can return it with interest and also I, I just just going back to it I think there's been quite a lot of comments talking about um, Vincent Koch maybe being lucky to be on the bench and also Vili LaRue in the 23. I just look at that bench and I see World Cup winners. A lot of World Cup winners. And in a tight, tense match, if you need a team to bring it home, they've got the personnel to do that. And also uh, another comment reminded me of the Australia v South Africa game in the Rugby Championship back in July when it was Reinach and Libok in the back line. A lot of the same personnel that were involved in this game were involved that day and you do wonder, and you wouldn't put it, wouldn't, wouldn't put it past Razi Erasmus, to have been thinking about this lineup for this fixture since then. It's going to be fascinating to look at. So I have done a combined team then and I've easily found this the hardest thing to do. 
uh, out of all the combined teams that I've done. I take the 23-man squad for France, 23-man squad for South Africa, put them into one 23-man squad, and that's what I came up with. What do you think? What do you make of that? Uh, I mean, at first glance, it looks like, oh, well, I, I, I'll have South Africa's pack and I'll have France's back line and I'll have South Africa's bench. If you want to put it in simplistic terms like that, yes. But I would just say, just like the game is on a knife edge, every single one of these calls in every single position, pretty much, is a knife edge call. And I could have gone either way. And let, let me just demonstrate that by showing you, this is the other players that I didn't pick. That 23-man squad of people that I didn't pick could win a World Cup. That's how good they are. So, but for what it's worth, let's dig into it. Yeah, I went for four out of the South African front five. The French front five isn't too shabby, let, let me tell you. But I think they could have an edge at scrum time. Could have an edge at scrum time. Equally, I think France could have an edge in the back line for all I've just said about South Africa having incredible gas. France have just got some stardust back there, haven't they? Oh, yeah, it's, it's going to be fascinating. But, you know, like I say, like South Africa have got the little edge in the front five. Well, maybe France have got an edge in the back row. South Africa, uh, sorry, France have got an edge in the back line, maybe. Well, South Africa have got a big, be uh, big advantage on the bench. Everything points to the fact that this is going to... These are two teams that could end up cancelling each other out. I'm going to say one thing. Let me finish on one point. Um, whoever loses can rightfully feel hard done by by the draw. The, it's a bit of a stitch up, really, that this game is happening at this point. I mean, it's amazing, these four quarterfinals. But it's going to be unfair on whoever goes home. However, however, can I just say one thing? The, the one reason I'm glad this fixture is happening, aside from it being an unbelievable rugby match, is that the two global superstars of rugby are going to be going head to head. The two captains, Sia Khaleesi and Antoine Dupont, easily the biggest names in the sport, comfortably the biggest global stars we have, the biggest ambassadors of the game, the people that will have the biggest influence on rugby growing through the, as a result of this World Cup. And so I will just say, the fact that South Africa are playing France means that one of those guys are going to be in a semi-final and will be heavy favourites to make a final. And that's great for the sport. Whether that be Sia Khaleesi or Antoine Dupont, Hope, let's hope that that just is purely down to the best team winning on the day. Let's not have a controversial officiating decision, please. Please, let's not have a controversial officiating decision. Let's not have contention. Let's have two incredible rugby teams going toe to toe, leaving nothing out there, putting it all out on the park and letting us sit back and enjoy sporting theatre at its very very best thank you so much for your support on the channel i'm going to say it out loud i haven't said it out loud at this point because i can't quite believe the words coming out of my mouth 50,000 subscribers is looking achievable by the end of the world cup bearing in mind i started this in well, the end of january my mind is blown and so i'm so grateful for the support on the channel thank you uh, please hit subscribe if you haven't and um Give the video a thumbs up, leave your comments and all the best to both teams on Sunday night. I cannot wait.